today we are going to see what exactly happens in the pivot shift test what many people know is that the knee joint what is we are seeing here this is made of the femoral condyle and the tibial condyle below we know that it has got a flexion and it has got an extension but what we often forget is that there is a third movement the third movement is the pivoting so if you want to know what the pivoting is all you have to remember is you remember your anatomy class where they teach you about the locking of the knee joint the locking of the knee joint happens in the last 15 degrees of extension where there is a rotational movement now here you got a right femur and a right tibia so what happens in the last 15 degrees in the last 15 degrees the femur becomes straight comes to 0 degrees and in the last moment there is a rotation so this rotation i am going to exaggerate it for you it rotates like this that is an inward rotation of the femur so this inward rotation of the femur is a characteristic of the shape of the tibial and the femoral condyle when this rotation happens the rotation is limited and controlled mainly by the acl but also by the other ligaments and even the muscles so this is the pivot term the pivoting term let us see what happens in the pivoting term this is an end on view of your tibia you got the the middle point this is where the acl is attached here you got the medial side and here you got the lateral side just like the world the earth has got an imaginary axis around which it turns the tibia or the femur relatively has got an imaginary axis which is passing exactly through the center so when you have the pivoting that is this moment it actually turns at the center so what holds the pivoting movement to the central part of the tibia that is held not by the acl not by the pcl but by an accumulation of all the ligaments the uh, capsule and the muscles of the knee joint including the shape of the femoral and tibial condyles the pivoting takes place through this imaginary axis so now you know that the imaginary axis of the pivoting is held there by all the ligaments which means if one single ligament is damaged then the pivot the pivoting axis cannot be held in this particular point this will move either to this side or to this so in the case of an anterior cruciate ligament injury let us examine what happens here like we said before and this is the pivot point that is the tibia rotates like this but as soon as the anterior cruciate ligament stops functioning you immediately have the pivoting point shifted to this part that is the medial condyle so what happens now let us look at the new center of rotation like this this is what is happening so the new pivot point is passing through the medial side and the lateral condyle is going in and out so let us now join this to the femur and see what exactly is happening when the acl is gone so this is the skeleton of a person that is imagine he is playing football so he comes he put his foot on the ground and he turns his body to this side so here there is no longer a ligament to prevent an excessive movement of these two condyles on each other and subsequently it dislocates so what is actually happening here is the medial condyle remains there and the lateral condyle comes forward and back so essentially what you have to understand is in the absence of an anterior cruciate ligament when there is an excessive load on the knee joint there is basically a subluxation of the lateral condyle of the femur over the tibia that is like this so if this is such a beautiful understanding of the pivot shift test 
and if the pivot shift is the exact representative of what is happening on in, inside NaCl deficient knee, why can't we use the pivot shift more? Why do we use something that is as inaccurate as the drawer or the lac map? The answer is very simple. The pivot shift can only be elicited if the patient is under anesthesia because the strength of the muscles keeps the pivot controlled and even in a person who has absolutely no ACL, no ACL function, you, it is very difficult to elicit the pivot shift test. So what we are going to see now is the pivot shift test being presented in a patient under anesthesia and afterwards we will again do it in this skeletal model. Ah, internal rotation, valgus stress. Ah, once more, once more, once more, and once more. Okay. So this is what is happening inside the knee joint in the video that you have just seen. You give an internal rotation movement, that is an internal rotation in extension. That is possible because the femoral condyle is smooth and has got a, almost a straight border here. But when it comes to here, it's a more curved model and it has to relocate and come to the reduced position. So let's do the pivot shift test here. So this is internal rotation. It is subluxated. It comes here and when it comes here, tuck, it reduces and comes to the reduced position. So again, this is extension. It is subluxated. And when it comes to the flex position, it reduces. So this is what is happening in the pivot shift test. And to get an, an accentuation of the click or thud, what you do is you give some amount of valgus force. So I am leaving you with one more repetition of the clip that you have seen. And I hope that this helps you to understand what happens in the knee joint in a pivot shift test and why it happens in the absence of the AC. So thank you. Internal rotation, valgus stress, ah, once more, once more, once more, and once more.